in this After Effects tutorial, I'll show you how to mix motion graphics and photos and why it might be a great idea. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. Adding simple and clean title animations to your videos might be nice, but also quite boring to be honest. To spice things up, you might want to fill the space. And a great way to do so is to add photos. Strengthen your message by adding visuals related to it. And generally, it makes your content so much more interesting to watch if you create something truly unique that stands out. You basically create a fake 3D, semi-realistic collage environment. And don't go too crazy though. Your main goal is the message you want to get across is read and understood as quickly as possible. You need to prioritize from the most important to visuals supporting your message and then a few decorative elements that balance out the composition. Quick tip, if we add a picture of a person, we instantly follow their line of sight. Nice way to get attention. So that's probably not a great idea. So where do we get great pictures? There are platforms providing free stuff like Pexels or Unsplash. Just make sure to mention the creator whenever possible. That's only fair, I think. You might have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. It comes with access to free pics on Adobe Stock. Another possibility is Motion Array, which is subscription-based as well. Important is to check the license. It's depending on your project, but most probably all your footage needs to be cleared for commercial use. You don't want to get into copyright issues because that might become very expensive. And of course, you could take your own pictures. Smartphones are good enough. Make sure there's enough lighting from all sides so there's as little shadows as possible. I use a white sheet of paper most of the time to make the contrast between the object and background as high as possible. Before we actually create an example, it's not just pictures, it's the place for everything you need to create stunning videos. MotionArray.com has video footage, music, sound effects, templates and plugins for After Effects and Premiere Pro. Which is awesome, because it saves you a lot of time and money. It's one subscription for all. Pay once, use it as much as you want. Subscribe through the link in the description and get $50 off. MotionArray.com. Better start now. Alright. Time for an example. I'm a huge coffee chunky and I think coffee is a lifesaver. So that'll be the message. We grab the title tool and add the text. Color white. I use Josephine Sun's semi bold, which is available on Adobe fonts. Coffee, really big, size around 340 pixels to put emphasis on it. And then below the rest, like a subline, all in one text layer. Let's align the width of the subline with coffee. Then we align the text to the center using the alignment tool. Next, let's add a real background. I really like this dark stone one, Slate probably. I found it on Adobe Stock. We need to scale it down though, to see the nice dark corners. All right, let's add an animated texture to the text. We add a new solid below the text layer. And then I add an animation preset I made. If you want to know how to create animated textures, you might want to check out this video. Link is in the description. To colorize it, I add tritone and adjust the colors. Three shades of brown, because coffee, right? We use the text layer as luma mat for the texture. And I think it goes great with the background. Anyway. Next, we add this nice cup of coffee, or cappuccino probably, which I found on Adobe Stock as well. Let's scale it down to 23%. Then we use the ellipse tool to add a round mask around the saucer, I guess it's called. Position it to match the edge of the saucer, we shrink the mask and add a mask feather, two pixels. We move it towards the top left corner of the screen, slightly overlapping with the C which connects the two elements. Next, we add a drop shadow. The light comes from the top left corner, so the shadow direction follows along, around 125 degrees, probably. Opacity around 85%. That's a lot, cause the background is quite dark. Distance, 60. Softness, 720. And now the cup actually sits on the background and text, before it seemed to hover above. Next. Let's add some coffee beans. Let's separate them from the background in Photoshop. We unlock the layer, then choose the object selection tool and select the beans. 
We turn the selection into a mask. Then we go to layer and add a fill layer. We choose some crazy color and use it as background. And now we select the mask. Take a brush and fine tune it. Use white to reveal stuff and black to hide areas. That's my preferred method, at least. How would you do it? Let me know in the comments below. We don't have to be too accurate, cause the background is quite dark. I usually save a copy as PNG, which is smaller and therefore easier for After Effects to handle. Let's import it, add it to the comp, scale it down, then position it below the R, slightly overlapping. We add curves and slightly darken the image. Much better. And we add drop shadow again. Make sure the shadow direction is the same than before, 125 degrees. Opacity 85%, more softness and some distance. And the coffee beans are connected to the background. Finally, let's add the spoon, which we took a picture of earlier. I separated it from the background in Photoshop, just like the coffee beans. Let's scale it down a bit and position it in the top right corner. We add curves, slightly darken the spoon. <laughs> of course, we add drop shadow again. Direction 125 degrees, opacity 85%. We increase the softness and add some distance. Not too much. Let's position it somewhere in the top right corner. Awesome. Let's check if all the proportions and colors feel right. I think the spoon is a little too small. And let's move it further out, pointing towards coffee. It's maybe a little too bright still. Let's tone down the bright parts. I think that's better. Let's quickly animate the elements. The text first. We add an opacity animator, set the opacity to zero. Set a start keyframe, then after one second and 12 frames, we set the start to 100%. We select the keyframes, open the graph editor and quickly adjust the speed curve. We slow down the end of the animation. Next, we open the position and rotation properties of the other three elements. Add keyframes to all of them. We select them and move them to the right for now. Next, we move all the elements out of the screen. Slightly rotate them. The start positions. We select the right keyframes, open the graph editor and slow down the end of the animations, adjusting the speed graph. Now we need to get the timing right. First of all, too slow. The text is first, of course. Then the cup comes in. The beans and the spoon is last. Seems good to me. Awesome. Finally, some compositing. We add an adjustment layer and add noise. 3 to 5% should be enough. No color noise. You could add posterized time and reduce the frame rate to give it a more handmade feel. What I like to do is add an overall light. We add a new solid, a bright yellow. Then we use the ellipse tool to add a mask. Somewhere in the upper left part maybe. We open the mask property and add a huge mask feather. And we set the blending mode of the layer to add. Maybe reduce the opacity. I think this helps to bring all the different elements together. Make sure to check out the links in the description. On the left side I've added some videos you might like. Subscribe to my channel on the right side and hit the bell, cause you don't want to miss my next video. Thanks for watching this one, see you in the next one, bye guys!